So it's um, May 7th, 2022. This is going to be an attempt at a Darcy's Corner, but we'll, we'll see where it goes. I was on Facebook today and a thing popped up telling me it's so-and-so's birthday. You know how it does and you... You click on the thing and maybe you just leave a little message saying happy birthday or I always try to leave a, one of those gifts or the, something funny usually or something cool. One of my favorites is a, is a dance. I'll say happy birthday dance and there'll be a person doing a boogie woogie. And uh, but this particular cousin died this year. He died of a drug overdose. He would have been 40 years old today. Him and I were not close growing up, but we were close in age. And we, we were friends, kind of, I guess. Once in a while, he would be in the same house I was in, and we would try to play together. His problem was that he had ADHD. Now, I also have ADHD, but he was extreme. <laughs> and he wasn't... You know, people said he was bad. I said he was bad. I didn't know any different. It was the 80s. I was wrong. He wasn't bad. He was just bored. And he just created constant stimulation. And the fastest way to get stimulation is to do something you're not supposed to do. You knock the thing over, you hide the thing, or you, you know, you disrupt life around you, and then chaos happens. And that was how Trad liked to live his life. <laughs> it wasn't really a fault, though. It was just, he was just ADHD. And so he was craving constant stimulation. And he was also always really smart, because ADHD, ADHD people are smart. He just didn't know how to focus it. We, we didn't have Ritalin in the 80s. At least most of us didn't. And his family just never knew how to, how to channel that for him. And then, uh, you know, we grow up like we do. And he would always, I shouldn't say always, but from time to time, he would comment on my Facebook posts and my Facebook arguments I'd be having with other family members. Now, particularly about religion, I remember a couple times. It wasn't that he was a particularly religious person. He would just watch me sparring with his cousin or that cousin, and he would just be like laughing at them and cheering me on. And I remember him doing that. I remember my grandfather on my father's side. Now, this cousin is on my mother's side. But anyway, my grandfather on my father's side. He passed. He was old and in a care facility. And I got to visit him about a week before he passed. And so I knew his time was near. And it was... Like, it was sad, but it was okay. But after he passed, I remember posting on Facebook the, you know, the obituary or something. And Chad was the only one to reach out to me and say something about my grandfather. I didn't even know if Chad knew him, but apparently when Chad was a kid, him and his dad used to go visit my grandfather once in a while. And um, so Chad shared those memories. And it was very kind of him to do that. Now, for the last three years, I've been dealing with my own <laughs> demons and problems. And I've posted about it on Facebook and YouTube. And, and I hadn't really even thought to see how Chad was doing 
And I'd heard that things in his house hadn't gone well, that he was separated from his wife. Uh, but I also heard from him from time to time that he's working on a gold mine, and he, the little bit I did hear from him, he seemed to be doing okay. He wasn't okay. At some point in time, he developed an opioid addiction. Now, I don't know if he had a bad back or a work injury or if he got sucked into the party lifestyle. I, I don't know exactly what caused him to get sucked into the opioid world. I do know that it is an epidemic in Canada, that it kills a lot of people. I know in the last couple of years, um, since our beloved Premier shut down our safe injection sites, thousands of people have died who otherwise would have lived. Well, my cousin died. He was in a different province, so that's not on the Premier in this province, but still. He was in his apartment and he was away from his wife and kids there in a different home and he used and the police found his body oh uh, yeah I didn't know him very well. You know, it's true. Um, since I've swapped the hormones and things, I am a lot more emotional now than I used to be. But there's an appropriate time to be sad. This is it. Sorry about that. I had to pause for a second while I uh, collected myself. I wish I'd gotten to know him better. I wish I'd taken some time in the last three years to send him a message to see how he was doing. He was a good man. I don't know what happened between him and his wife, but I'm sure he loved his wife. I know he loved his kids. I know that he wanted to go on living. And I know his life was worth saving. I didn't know he was in trouble. <laughs> Cause like everyone else, I was obsessed with my own problems. And if I had known he was in trouble, I don't know what I would have done to help him. I've been fortunate enough to live long enough, even though I'm only 42. And I've met enough people anybody, anybody can develop an addiction to drugs. It doesn't mean you're into the party lifestyle. Maybe you had a bad back. Maybe you had a sore tooth. The beginning of the pandemic, before it kind of got rolling, I had a really bad toothache and I had to get a tooth removed and I was on T3s for a week. And at the end of that week, my mouth was still really sore and I needed some more painkillers. But I knew if I stayed on the T3s, much longer, my body would develop a, an addiction. I would then begin to need them. So I switched to a different medication. But not everybody makes that decision. I don't know how he got sucked into drugs. I just know 
It could happen to anybody. And also, I don't care. Maybe he wasn't in the party lifestyle. And that's how he got sucked into it. Once you're in it, it doesn't matter how you got there. You're there. And it's a hard thing to beat. And it's a really hard thing to beat on your own. I don't blame him for that. I'm sorry that we weren't there for him. Anyway, I just think it should be on public record that somebody remembers him, that his life mattered, and I'm sorry we failed him as a society. I'm sorry we didn't do more. Love your friends. Love your family. And don't judge because you don't know what somebody's going through on the other side. Sometimes good people make bad decisions. I don't know if there's any value to this video at all. <laughs> but like everything else, I'll probably share it. Anyway. I miss you, Chad. And I'm sorry what you do. Darcy's Corner. Peace.